friends, and welcome to the Paranatural Podcast. My name is Ben. I'm John Mellencamp. <laughs> and he's sucking on a chili dog. He's Jake. And we are so glad to have you with us tonight as Jake decides to start alphabetically and pick the, the first state alphabetically. And he's going to tell you about some shit from Alabama. So, should be fun. Take yes. it away, buddy. Yes, I am telling you. <laughs> it's a it's a little mini thing that I thought I had the most clever name for. It's the United States of Paranatural. <laughs> the Paranatural States of America. That's also good. I know. And united we shall stand. <laughs> <laughs> One nation under Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we figured from time to time it would be kind of fun just to dive into other states' shit, just specifically. And Jake's like, well, alphabetical order. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So that's yeah, what we're doing. So, and people listen, just desperately waiting for us to do their state. I mean, they might. Oh, they will. <laughs> With an idea like this, they're going to be like, oh, we have this. And then I'm totally not going to do it. And they're going to be like, what the fuck, Jake? That that sounds on brand for us. <laughs> so- <laughs> yeah. But it also gives me a chance to read something out of this new book I got. My cryptid book. The fancy new book. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's hilarious. There's a lot of dick references. Did you write that book and forget about it? Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> you know how, like, you got Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Dogman, but you ain't got a dog woman or a Snatch Squatch? Uh, I'm sure you're going somewhere with this, so I'm just going to agree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I'm getting at is... Every cryptid, other than Albert Osman's story, and like not including aliens, most of them are dudes. They both got twig and berries. Or they all, you know, male lizard man, uh, dog man. So I'm not convinced that something is called a dog man and or lizard man because they saw its penis. I think it's just because it is human shaped. I'm just saying. <clears throat> I don't know. It's usually thought to be a man, but tonight I have a wolf woman story. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. So this is out of Mobile. Alabama. <clears throat> and I'm going to read this part from the book. It's a hilarious book. Only 10 bucks. Um, it's by J.W. Ocker. Mm-hmm. And this part just cracked me up. Penis reference. Sometimes cryptozoology is a real Mongolian death worm fest. Dick fest. Sausage fest. And I'm not referring to the gender spectrum of cryptozoologists, although that's probably true as well. I mean the cryptids themselves. There are lizard men and dog men and elephant men and moth men and goat men and bunny men, but precious few hyphen women of any kind. Sure, the Bigfoot in the Patterson-Gimlin footage has breasts, And sure, the mermaids of Norfolk, which I didn't like that story. There's not mermaids of Norfolk. (laughs) Um, But female cryptids still beat their wings moth women-like against the glass ceiling. That's why the wolf woman of Mobile stands out and should be celebrated by her home state of Alabama. Now... (laughs) Now I'm going to get into my section of this. But yes, that is from the book. And it is very enjoyable. 
That that was actually um, actually that is enjoyable. I, I like his writing style. <laughs> yeah, that's how all of them are. Like, there's some stories that I don't like in there because like it's not cryptids. It's just like it's got the biggest um, chainsaw tree Sasquatch. Mm. Um, it's not it's got, uninteresting, I suppose. It's got a stump that looked like a cryptid hmm. that they just kept in front of a bar for years and years. And then Norfolk, Virginia, they're like, we need something. So they kind of adopted mermaids, but nobody ever saw any. No mermaid-like activity. Well, now that's just some tomfoolery. Is it tomfoolery? Indeed, it is. Down with that <laughs> kind of shit. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I like at least one person witnessing something if I'm going to read about it. Or if your town is going to adopt it. Right. Like, there should be something. Like that... the Flatwoods monster. It was only seen that one day. Yeah. But they seen it. Well, there's this story that I'm doing is two weeks. This wolf woman. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's a huge. Oh, I'll get into it. In the first couple weeks of April 1971, residents of Mobile, Alabama suburbs of Port City and Plateau had encounters with a strange and bizarre creature. The half-wolf, half-woman creature so frightened the citizens of Mobile that people began calling the Mobile Register to report the sightings. Um... And like people, people will think like, oh, was it just like a regular wolf human hybrid that people see where it's got like longer <laughs> yeah, hair? Yeah, wolf that... human hybrids are regular. Well, maybe in Alabama. And <laughs> inbreeding <laughs> no. does funny things to some people's genetics. I mean, people do call dogs family. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alabama. I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> you know why reverse doggy style is illegal in Alabama? Why? You don't turn your back on family. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alabama, love you. We we do love you. We're we're just kidding. There's plenty of Michigan jokes out there too. Yeah, and lots of inbreeding. Jake's family tree only forked twice, I think. I have three eyes. <laughs> Extra nipples. <laughs> No, I only got one of those. Oh, you got the other ones taken off? Got those removed finally? <laughs> well, yeah, it was alarming growing out of my belly button, so. <laughs> yeah. And let's not get started on Ben. <laughs> he can he can track his family all the way back to Grandma's sister Pete. And, uh, Uncle Job. Look, my Uncle Grandpa says that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> April 8th, 1971, the newspaper reported the phenomenon. Do, 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 do. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to put <laughs> that on the soundboard one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with a drawing of the creature conceived by the newspaper's illustrator. Witnesses described the creature as hairy, as half wolf, half woman, and pretty. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no, neither was I. The top half. And the furries have en the furries have entered the chat. <laughs> yeah. Well you know you know the top half is gonna be because they said pretty. They weren't focused on the face, Ben. Got large bosoms, does it? <laughs> It has human bosoms, human the one bosoms. hairless part of its body. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Well, that in its face, but <sighs> who's paying attention? Uh, the bottom half is a wolf, of course. After the initial report in the Mobile Register, the newspaper received over 50 calls of encounters and sightings over the following week. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, citizens were chased by the creature, stalked, and saw it roaming in their backyards. Witness, 
Witnesses described it as having the upper body of a beautiful woman and the back quarters of a beautiful wolf. <laughs> all right, I added that beautiful, but <laughs> and that it ran on all fours as a wolf would. But most sightings took place at night by terrified witnesses, and a lot of people also reported it standing upright bipedal as you would say mm. um surprisingly no one was hurt or assaulted and the police took the investigation seriously because of the sheer volume of reported sightings although officers would not make it an official comment they did investigate to determine what exactly mobile's citizens were seeing but after little more than 10 days the creature disappeared never to be seen again the reporter said at the time that the fear of witnesses seemed very real, despite the fact that the reports began April Fool's Day. Hmm. Sightings of the half wolf, half human creatures have been reported throughout history, with the werewolf being the most common incarnation. Since the dawn of civilization, legends of half human, half animal creatures have tantalized the curious and helped build mythologies the werewolf is one of the more popular of these anthropomorphic creatures that was a big word i'm proud of myself yeah, you did good you did good and familiar to use because they have roots in both european and native american folklore and i you know what i am gonna try this the uh I have the newspaper clipping and I'm going to send it to you, Ben, just because it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. The drawing is hilarious. Um, but I'm going to try to read it to the best of my abilities. Your abilities? Um, ability all. Okay. <clears throat> just going to send it! <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. You probably can't see that. No, can not, you? no. <laughs> okay um so it, the title is but would you believe and uh i sent it to you benjamin it says say it ain't so sam could this be what mobile's mysterious <laughs> wolf woman looks like <laughs> Oh, fuck. Describe it to the good people, Ben. Oh, I will do my best. Um, so, yes, what I'm looking at is a... a not untalented, but sort of crude pencil drawing <laughs> uh, of a female <laughs> face with very, very long, luscious hair uh, and a very 90s bang line. With uh, pointy ears. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to move in here to get... Oh, she has a bit of fur on her cheeks. But the rest of the face is hairless and very shapely. Uh, yes, those are some very large pendulous breasts that I see there. <laughs> uh, covered mostly in hair. So if you're into that kind of thing, I guess. Uh, then we have some uh, human-ish front hands. Is that, that what I'm looking at there? Yeah, there. it's got the nails coming up. Yeah, very, very long clawed kind of thing going on there. Uh, and then the rest of it looks, uh, yeah, very canid. But this drawing is fucking hilarious. <laughs> so <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the descriptions I read for it, I wish I would have put it in here, but I do remember it. It said, basically how you described it, has pointed ears, has almost a wolf-like nose, but it's cute and human like as well um no fangs to speak of but five o'clock shadow yes yes <laughs> um got a and then nicer beard than some guys i know yes uh the the person who drew this said it, he only added the hair on the what do you call them the pendulous pendulous breasts Yes, yes. He said he put hair on them because he felt as though he couldn't be drawing 
them hairless. Ah, so that was an uh, artistic license, if you will. <laughs> an artistic uh, censorship. Aha. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to try to read it. The writing 1970s uh, newspaper. So it kind of bleeds together a little. But it says, say it ain't so, Sam. Could this be what Mobile's mysterious wolf woman looks like? From various descriptions of the night creature phoned to the press register during the past week, the above drawing was created. Reportedly, reportedly, none of the callers who volunteered descriptive information on the wolf woman had personally seen it, but have close friends or relatives who have. The apparition evidently frequents the Davis Avenue and the Plateau areas after nightfall. And it wants me to say, again, Mobiles Register Artists' Conception. Uh, then this title is, Is Wolf Woman Sulking Around the City? Various Area Persons Claim Seeing Creature. Does a wolf woman exist in Mobile? Listening to as many as 50 phone calls the press register has received day and night in approximately a week, you wonder if perhaps there isn't something out there. According to dozens of frightened residents along Davis Avenue and in Plateau, a strange creature, a half-woman, half-wolf, has been making nightly rounds of Port City. Reportedly, the apparition first appeared near Davis Avenue about one week ago. It was like a woman and a wolf, hairy and pretty, said a worried witness. My daddy saw it. <laughs> My daddy saw it down in a marsh and chased him. <laughs> and it chased him home, reported a teenager who added, Now my mom keeps all the doors and windows locked. The top half is a woman and the bottom half is a wolf, explained another viewer. It didn't seem natural. <laughs> I don't know. They look pretty natural to me in the drawing. Uh, I'd say definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Apparently, the fears are real, regardless of the status of the phantom or whatever. One usually unflappably. Unflappable. Unfla unflappable. What does that mean? Uh, un. So it's somebody who's not phased very easily. Oh, one usual, usually unflappable teenager said with a straight face that he does not go out at night on the streets anymore. One woman said she understood the creature had escaped from a circus sideshow. Mobile police refused official comment on the reports. However, it was unofficially indicated that an investigation has been launched into ascertaining exactly what the situation is. Paris had its hunchback of Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Maybe Mobile has its wolf woman of Davis Avenue. On the other hand, many years ago, Mobile had its monster of Fisher's Alley. To terrified residents of the area it was reported in, it assumed proportions of up to the size of a t of a T-Rex. Oh, shit. And never... Never smaller than a full-grown puma. That's, That's quite a the, big uh, uh, discrepancy there. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> the monster turned out to offer... <laughs> turned out to be an... Mm, often harmless to everything but fish. It rather blows my mind to consider that... What the wolf woman may turn out to be. I want to know the monster of Fisher's Alley. Yeah, no shit. It was as big as a T-Rex, apparently. apparently. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the newspaper article for it. Back from, what did I say, 71? Yeah, I think something like it. Yeah, 1971. Um, blah, 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 blah. Perhaps the original writers of the story Mobile Wolf Woman got it right. In the article pictured that one, the author calls the creature an apparition and phantom, 
Or was it a feral woman brought up by wolves? Or something to do with wolves? Cue bad to the bone. Diana, Diana, Diana. <laughs> Um, whatever the truth of the story, something caused quite a stir in Mobile, Alabama in the first two weeks of April 1971. And then she disappeared, never to be seen again. What'd you think of that one, Ben? I mean, that's it, it's interesting. You got so many eyewitnesses in such a short period of time, it's but it doesn't make any sense. I mean, there's no making sense out of that. Yeah. Apparently uh, a neighboring state also saw her and had quite a few reports. Hmm. Um, But we're doing Alabama this week. So Uh, next we have the Alabama white thing. You didn't say anything, Ben. <laughs> but it kind of sounds sexual, so I'll roll with it, okay? <laughs> We're going to whip out our white thing. <laughs> well, so I think you'll like this one if you've never heard of it. It sounds really familiar. Well, then I'm sure you'll know what it is because that's how it happens. In the heart of the Alabama backwoods... <laughs> Got a pretty mouth, boy. <laughs> Squeal. When that movie takes place in Georgia, doesn't it? Mm. 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 I don't know. But dueling banjos anywhere in the backwoods of anywhere, yeah, fair. you want to run. <laughs> fair enough. Where the dense foliage... See, Alabama, you're not alone. You're not alone. We're getting in on Georgia. Where the dense foliage entwined like a tapestry of secrets, there lingered a chilling legend known as the White Thang, a special entity, a spectral entity that haunted the imaginations of those who dared to tread the darkened paths of the wilderness. It was a tale shrouded in mystery, woven with threads of terror and passed down through generations as a haunting warning. The legend spoke of a creature, a specter with fur as white as fresh snow and eyes that glowed an otherworldly light, red and most. Of course. Uh, yep. <laughs> I don't know if it says the height, but just guess it. Seven feet. It's seven okay. foot tall. I don't, I don't care what they say. <laughs> Some said that it had the form of a massive hound, while others claimed it resembled a creature born from a nightmare, a spectral beast that defied explanation and defied capture. The first accounts of the White Thang emerged from the stories of Native American tribes who spoke of an ancient guardian spirit, a spectral creature that roamed the forest. That's the third time they've used spectral. Thank you. I was just going to say, they're using that word an awful lot. Get a fucking thesaurus. <laughs> yeah, use that thesaurus. Try ghostly. Otherworldly. <laughs> well, Ethereal. They used, they used Jesus, fuck, other... I don't even have a thesaurus. I just thought of a bunch of words you could use instead of spectral. Let's see. It says, let's see, otherworldly spectral entity. <laughs> Gosh. Um, where Boo! Was it? Sp- Boo, people <laughs> who wrote that. Boo! <laughs> A ghostly, <clears throat> there you go, Ben. Thank you. Creature that roamed the forest, protecting the balance between a natural world and the realm of the spirits. They spoke of encounters with the creature, the spectral creature, <laughs> encounters that left those who witnessed it with a profound sense of awe and fear. As the tales of the white thing spread, it's a good thing it's not the legs. Yet. They be- <laughs> no, that was the, the wolf woman. Once I catch up with the white thing, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they be they became intertwined with the fears and the beliefs of settlers who ventured into the Alabama wilderness. 
The story took place on a more sinister tone, the creature of malevolence. Haunting the woods with glowing red eyes that glared from the shadows, some set at stock travelers and livestock, leaving behind only fear and devastation. Legends of the White Thing grew with each retelling, and the creature became a symbol of the unknown. Oh, what? The, <laughs> the embodiment of the terrors that lurked beyond the safety of a firelight. It was said that those who encountered the White Thing were stricken with a terror so profound that it seeped into their very souls, leaving them forever changed. The creature's appearances were fleeting and elusive, like the fleeting moonlight that danced through the trees. Witnesses spoke of ghostly apparitions, visions that left them questioning their sanity. Jesus, Some, fuck, they're spreading it on thick as shit, ain't they? They are. God damn. I feel like I have to read it in like the mysterious voice. <laughs> Some claimed to have heard the mournful cries of the white thing. <laughs> I can't say thang like that. <laughs> just just for clarification, uh, it, it is spelled that way. T-H-A-N-G. Yes, yeah, yes. It's... I wouldn't be reading it like that. I'm no, not that Jake mean. doesn't have that kind of accent. No, <laughs> no. Echoing through the night, while others swore that it had glimpses of uh, of ethereal form darting hey! through the shadows. <laughs> Yet, the spectral. <laughs> Despite the chilling tales and haunting encounters, the white thing remained an enigma, a legend that defied explanation and reason. Some dismissed it as mere folklore, born from the imaginations of those who sought to explain the unexplainable. Still, Others clung to the belief that the creature was real, an elusive guardian of the wilderness, the Lorax. A spectral sentinel that bridged the gap between the world of the living and the realm of the spirits. To this day, the legend of the White Thang endures, whispered around campfires and shared in hushed tones. It is a tale of terror and mystery, a testament to the primal fears that lurk within the depths of the human psyche. With Whether real or imagined, the white thing remains an eternal enigma, second time, <laughs> haunted the Alabama wilderness with its eerie presence, forever entwined with the untamed heart of the backwoods. We smoking shit in a glass pipe, blowing the Lord's bubbles. <laughs> fair. It's a fair person who said that. Jesus, whoever wrote that, holy Christ. Uh, you know, if they wouldn't have used spectral 30 times and enigma too many times, it would have been... It was fun reading it. Yeah, I mean, sure. But goddamn, <laughs> after all that buildup, this better be good. Oh, no. I couldn't find any, <laughs> any, uh, like, there's people who are like, oh, oh, yeah. So I did read size. Sorry. <laughs> Seven to nine feet tall. Um, yep, told you. It is mostly described as a Sasquatchian-like creature. Yeah, that's probably why it sounds familiar. Yep. Um, white as snow, it has long fur and, of course, red eyes. Um, usually walks upright, but has been noted. I'm not saying seen because I couldn't find any. But, yeah, so that's it for the white thing. So no actual witness accounts, just uh, there's Native American ones, but like just a very flowery could, uh, description. Well, you could tell it got fucked up over the times. Mm. Like they're like, oh, and then it it picked up a thirty ton boulder, the seven foot creature. Like pretty strong, but, but yeah, 
That's too strong. Yeah, it's, it's, Seven to nine feet tall. All right. Next, we have hugging Molly. I mean, it, you know, nice hug. Everybody needs a hug. That's true. So let's hear about hugging. Oh, it's hugging Molly, not hugging. <laughs> hugging. She's hugging that white thing. <laughs> <Not that. laughs> All right. <clears throat> we get another one of these. Are, are we going to read are it we like get that again? Spectral ready? cuddles now? <laughs> spectral cuddles. Spectral cuddles. Yes. Okay, I'm going to read it in my voice again. All right. On a cold, dark, rainy night, so bitterly cold, damp, and dark, when even streetlights won't burn, when the striking of a match refuses to yield the tiniest flame on nights like this hugging molly comes out of her lair and roams the streets of abbeville to see whom she can find okay 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 when so matches won't light count. because spooky i'd fucking <laughs> <laughs> So begins one account of the story the people of Abbeville have told each other since the early 1900s. The local legend is known as Huggin' Molly or the Lady in Black. Who is this woman all clad in black and why is she after the children of Abbeville? What does she want with them? The local legend of Huggin' Molly has it that a tall figure around six foot six. Seven foot tall. Damn it! <laughs> Start walking the streets of Abbeville looking for victims, mostly children. She has no name other than what the townsfolk started calling her. No face to speak of, and no one knows why she is after children. She almost has this witch-like status around her, although her behavior is anything but witchly. Not really. Witches want kids. Do they? According to Hansel and Gretel. I feel like that's a stereotype. <laughs> Sorry, witches out there. Huggin' Molly is said to be dressed in all black with a wide brim hat. Also black. Wandering through the night in the disguise of the shadows where even the streetlights won't illuminate her identity. Once she found a victim... An innocent child wandering after darkness, she attacks them, hugging the person tightly as she is screaming loudly into their ears. This is it. Don't tell my lawyer we kill people, man. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. That's it. There are no stories of her actually hurting anyone. Oh, she Jesus. simply hugs them and yells at them. Although oh, terrifying I'm enough sorry. on its own. I'm sorry. <laughs> but... Are there any origin stories to this local legend of the hugging ghost? I told what do you, you think, ben? spectral cuddles. It's pretty much what it is. And sure, her screaming into your ear. What does she scream? Just, ah! just ah! maybe she just scared and needs a fucking hug. Anybody ever think about that? No, they only think about themselves. True. Tall people get scared too. Right. I'm tall. I get scared. Yeah. And I have been to hug. It's fine. It's fine. Maybe she ben, just needed a hug. Ben has comforted me many, many times. Or maybe she's out. just excited to see a cute child and wants to hug it and her scream. She's just real bad at showing excited through screams. So it sounds scared or mean or something. Or like she's getting this bad rap because she screamed into the ear of someone with tinnitus. Could be that. It's most likely that. Don't hate the huggers, man. <laughs> I'm a hugger. Yeah, same. I know you are, Ben. <sighs> <laughs> this is how me and Ben actually became friends. Like, after a while, I'm like, who is this big threatening dude? I'm going to give him a hug. And I did. And look at where we are today. He's my best friend. Yep. Hugs will heal the world, buddy. Hugs? Hugs break down the walls that words cannot. That's actually beautiful, Jacob. Thank I you. I like that. 
The Many Legends of Hug and Molly. Who she is supposed to be has been up for debate and changes as the story itself changes throughout time. Was she a witch or a ghost of a woman that used to live in Abbeville? Is she something completely different than a human? In some accounts, when the local townsfolk tell the legend, Hug and Molly was a woman living in Abbeville a long time ago. She experienced a mother's worst nightmare when she lost her own child. Her grief was too much to bear, and it made her mad. She started to roam the nights and went after the local children to make up for the death of her child. Like it was a way of dealing with the tragedy of losing her own. Now, <clears throat> see, she's just a big sad lady. You ever watch Mama? No. Really? Really? Oh, okay. Well, if you watch it, you would definitely get this. Spoiler. But yeah, like, it's, it's a pretty okay movie. Jessica Chastain. But. The mama in it, super ugly. Um, <clears throat> in other accounts of the legend, she was a woman who got murdered in cold blood on the very street she is now haunting and trying to fulfill something. Perhaps she was killed after dark with no one to look out for her and now, in turn, looking out for others? She's a sweetheart. She's protecting people. She's like, are you lost, child? Let me give you a hug and scare you back to your house. That's actually pretty fucked up because we were talking shit like that was the case. And then it was the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Called it. <laughs> Perhaps the real story behind the legend is the version about her being a professor at what used to be the Alabama Agriculture School as some of the variations of the legend suggest. In these versions, she is only trying to keep the students safe by getting them off the streets at night. She's Again. so sweet. Molly is a sweetheart. Apparently. Or perhaps it wasn't a ghost at all that haunted the streets in her afterlife, but someone or something getting dressed up specifically for this to walk out in the dark and scare and hug children. Somehow, this comes off as almost more frightening than a ghost who only wants a hug. Not really. No, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Someone or something. Yes. A person doing this is way creepier than if it was some sort of ghost. I guess. I don't know. Either way, I'd give someone a hug, and if they yell at me, I'm yelling right back. Yeah, maybe just nobody ever told her. Hey, don't don't do the yell thing. Shh. Yeah, shh. <laughs> Let's just embrace. Fucking shh. Don't scream. Right. Or or she's she saw the white thing and now she's terrified and that giving people hugs. Could be it. That's probably it. Now we have my final story of Alabama. The Downey Booger. <laughs> That's a funny name. Yes, yes, it is. Which, did you know there's actually two cryptids with Booger in their name? I was aware of one that is like a Bigfoot type creature. The Wood Booger. Yes. And then we have the Downy Booger. Oh, it's not a Wood Booger? No, it's a Downy Booger. Oh, well, all right then. All right, just before, um, I'm sure, I'm, I'm thinking it does have the height in it. Guess the height. Yeah, we're just going to say seven feet because they all are. I'm going to scroll through this real quick and see. All right, I didn't see it with my quick scroll, so we're just going to get there. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to take a sip of this delicious beverage real quick. Tastes like oatmeal cream pies. Okay, that's great. Are you having fun with this, Ben? Yes, actually. That's pretty fun. It's entertaining. The Wolf Woman was pretty funny. Okay. 
In the later part of the 1800s, Winston County, Alabama was known for its rugged men, still brewed whiskey, hard shell preachers, and Saturday night dances. It was also known for the Downey Booger. John and Joe Downey were cousins. They were constantly together like two peas in a pod. They were returning home from one of those dances when they first saw the booger. <laughs> I love this podcast. I hate so it when much. you can see a booger. <laughs> they sound like uh, Bo and Luke Duke. Okay. Okay. Only in a wagon? Only in a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> there were only two houses on this long stretch of road they traveled. One was the Hub Bond place with the lightning rods. The other was the rambling log house belonging to the Oscar Tittle, <laughs> where the dances had been held. The remainder of the road was enveloped in dense pine forest. John and Joe were jostling. <laughs> along on their thoroughbreds, gaily recounting the events of the evening, when suddenly a strange-looking creature, bearing both the resemblance of a human and an animal, leapt out in front of them. The horses must have spotted it the same instant the boys did, for they stood on their hind feet, snorting madly, almost throwing them off of their saddles, when whirled around and took off on a wild stampede in the opposite direction, using every ounce of strength they could muster. They managed to bring them to a halt. They turned around and again started toward home. As they approached the wet sand bed where this creature had first appeared, the horses came to an abrupt stop. They gouged them in the side, beat them with the bridles, but they could not get them to budge an inch. Finally, they turned around and rode back to the Tittle House, remembering a longer route they could take instead. They would pass through Lynn, a small town seven miles from their home. This was known as Byler Road. The sun had risen when the boys arrived. Their parents doubted their odd story as much as they had been able to trust them before no one else had run into the booger at this time one night about three months later a family was returning from a three-day church service damn three-day church service that's too long they got all the demons <laughs> <laughs> when they came to the sand when they came to the sand bed it darted out from behind a clump of bushes it stood for a few seconds and, as quickly as a wink, ran from sight. The children were panic-stricken so much that for months their family or their mother had to make a pallet for them all to sleep together. This is my favorite part of the story. Very American. On a moonlit night in early fall... Jim Jackson loaded his two-horse wagon with his barrels of homemade moonshine and headed to the Commissary of Galloway, a mining town a few miles from his home. The manager of this commissary would sell it secretly to the miners for a huge profit. He was jogging along, hearing nothing but the melancholy whine of the wind on the pine branches, probably thinking of the loot he would receive from the liquor when he sensed he was being followed. Glancing over his right shoulders, his eyes fell upon a peculiar-looking creature waltzing on two feet behind his wagon. He froze. His first impulse was try to outrun it. He decided against that because his mules, Pet and Haith, or Hattie, it says or Hathy, but or Hattie, just so you know, were not accustomed to running except downhill. This was ground level. <laughs> he fat remembered mules. his... Huh? He's got fat mules. Yeah. He remembered his gun on, his, on the wagon seat beside him. He took the revolver, aimed, fired twice, and screamed like a woman in distress and went limping away on three feet. 
the news quickly spread. Jim Jackson had shot the downy booger. A posse was formed. They combed the forest, only finding traces of flood leading to the sand bed to the distant cliff. Until this day, the incident is repeated among the residents of Winston County. What the downy booger was will forever be a mystery. But if you're ever in Winston County and suddenly you smell fresh, clean laundry, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> it could be a downy booger. Could be a downy booger. I like the downy ball. I use that. The what? The downy ball for my fabric softener. <laughs> oh, never mind. I also wanted to do this just because we're friends, Ben. I read something interesting. Did you know you've played Mario, right? Yes. Okay. You know his Tanuki suit? Yes. Did you know that Tanuki is, in fact, a cryptid? Yes. Do you know the really fascinating thing about it? Maybe. Why don't you tell me? State what you know about it. I know that it's, I don't know, some kind of flying little raccoon yokai guy. It's a raccoon dog mix. Mm. Um, It can shape shift. Mm. It can fly. But the awesome thing about it is it has huge magical testicles of course it does because it uses, Japan. it uses the sack to uh protect itself from the rain um it flies with its balls huge balls and they can also be used as weapons kind of glad they didn't put that in the fucking game <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, I like that he flies with his tail. I'm glad he doesn't have a scrot that just like <laughs> flaps his scrot and takes. Fucking... <laughs> yeah, it's like a hang glider. <laughs> Fuck, that gives a whole new meaning to the bat wing thing. Every guy knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, well, I imagine they like when they want to travel, they just kind of like sit on it like those uh, bounce balls. <laughs> Does a nutty bounce and just bling. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> God, Christ. Of course, because Japan, from the land of tentacle porn. Here you go. (laughs) Fuck is wrong with those guys over there? See, we're we're hitting everyone, like Alabama, Georgia, Japan. Nobody is safe today. (laughs) Paranatural attack. (laughs) But that's all I got for Alabama. There was more, but, you know, episodes. (laughs) All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed that little jaunt into the American South for some cryptid stories, then you know what to do. Come back and uh, tell a friend about us and bring them in, too, so they can hear about bouncing on balls and white things. As always, we thank you so very much for joining us and listening. We love you. Good night. Thanks for listening to my uh, spectral speak. (laughs) <laughs> and uh love you good night dream of fake bouncy balls <laughs>